Uh, hey there, uh, I'm Dylan Ayers and I'm with Eat Wild and today I want to show you uh, what you want to do with a elk head after you get back from the field in order to clean it up. So this here, which I'll unwrap in a few minutes, is uh, a bull elk that I, that I shot a few days ago uh, in the Northern Rockies. And uh, what I want to do is I want to be able to clean it up really nice so that it looks something like this that uh, you can hang on your wall and doesn't stink too bad. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that over the next uh, few minutes. I wrap it up with plastic as best I can to avoid flies getting down into the crevices of the antlers and laying their eggs and just making it a more unpleasant uh, operation than it's already going to be. I've got this thing unwrapped here. Now we've got this relatively gruesome elk head here. Uh, there's the eyeballs are still in there. It's not terribly pleasant. There's the, a few points where the lower jawbone attaches. One is it attaches up through here and on the other side and of course right across the back. So I've, I've cut all that uh, out and pulled it off and left it in the field because I don't have any use for it. If I turn this guy right over, I can show you that there's a... Uh, these are, these teeth right here are, um, are actually ivory and they're, they're the uh, remnants of what were tusks uh, uh, back when they were hanging around in the Pleistocene, Pleistocene era. Um, but uh, they're kind of pretty. To, uh, I, if you take them out and clean them up, they look like this. And you can see they've got uh, beautiful growth rings in them. And uh, they're quite pretty. And if you have a friend that's an artist, they might uh, carve it up for you and, and turn it into a nice pendant or necklace or something you can wear. So you want to pull those out. That's the first thing I do. And how I do that, it's uh, I'm careful not to run the knife up against the, the, uh, the tooth itself or the ivory itself. I try to point the knife away from the ivory and then you want to run the knife down along the, the tooth and you want to get right down to the root and give it a wiggle so well that worked out pretty good okay that one came out pretty easy so anyways I take them out and then uh, you see there's a lot of flesh on here now this flesh is almost impossible to tear off so what I do is I just drop it in a a little glass of water like this. I leave it in a warm place and I let the water develop bacteria and then that bacteria will eventually eat up that flesh on the outside of the, uh, of the tooth. And after a couple weeks the flesh will just rub right off and you'll have a nice clean um, finished ivory. It's very tempting to want to pry it out like this now but you'll just pry the end of your knife. Oh, there it goes. Like that. Practically a dentist. Alright, into the into the water to rot away. Okay, so the next thing is to get down to actually just cutting the back of the head off here. Uh, I cut the back of the head off for a couple reasons. One is so that I've got a nice angle here um, that'll sort of mount flush to the wall. Uh, so if you can imagine, you kind of want these, you want a line kind of, if you're thinking about where it's going to hang against the wall, you want a line that kind of runs from the back of the horns down, down through there. So I'm going to do my best to run the saw across a line right here uh, and hopefully it'll kind of lay flush against the wall. Um, the other thing is, is if I cut right across the back here, I'm going to open up the brain cavity, which is going to allow me to pull the, the brains out of there fairly, fairly easily. And I can save the brains and I'll tell you about that in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and do my best to cut it. So, often I would take advantage of a chainsaw for this part of the job, but just be really careful when you got a buddy who's holding this thing nice and firmly, that you're doing it over a stump, so the chainsaw's got somewhere to go um, once you work your way through the skull. Make sure you don't hit the teeth, and make sure you clean the saw thoroughly after, especially if it's your buddy's chainsaw. the back part of the, the, the brain cavity off here, the back of the skull. I've got a nice flush angle to go ahead and mount my uh, skull to once this is all cleaned up and ready to go for the wall. Um, uh, so 
what I've done though is I've created access to get down into uh, the brain cavity here, which makes it much easier to poke in here and uh, pop out the brain. I've scooped the brains out. I'm going to save these brains for uh, a friend of mine who would like to tan a couple of deer hides uh, this year. Uh, so the, the brains actually act as an agent in the tanning process. Uh, and um, now I could go over and trim all of these little bits up, uh, but actually I'm going to wind up boiling this head for about six hours. And after that six hours in the water, uh, all this flesh is going to fall right off and I'm just going to be left with a skull. And even this stuff up here, like this uh, little bit of hide and hair here that's hanging on, um, after six hours it'll come right off, it'll just pull right off. So I can save uh, the, the brutal knife work of trying to cut it away uh, by just... Uh, pop it in the boiling water. I'm going to let that uh, do its thing here for the next uh, about six hours on a slow boil and check on it once in a while and keep the water level up so it's just at the base of the antlers and then uh, yeah we'll see how it looks here. I'll, I'll probably want to add a little bit more water here just to bring it right up to uh, just so that hair gets softened right up and uh, yeah that looks perfect. Okay we'll see in six hours. So I've just pulled this out of the, uh, the bucket of boiling water here and you can see all the flesh has started to fall away from the skull and now it's kind of the not so pleasant part is to just go ahead and pull that stuff away and uh, hopefully it's all freed up enough that you should just be able to kind of dig into the crevices and pull it all out. If you don't boil it for like a few hours, then it just it's just almost impossible to get it to free right up. I've uh, pulled all the tissue out of the skull here, and then I just scrubbed it a little bit with a plastic scrub brush to try and get the majority of the bits that want to stick on there off. And then I've given it a bit of a rinse with my with my hose. Um, if you have a pressure pressure uh, washer, it makes this job a little easier or quite a bit easier. You can just pressure wash all the bits off, and it comes out even a little bit whiter. But uh, I'm hoping that uh, what we'll do next here is I'm going to uh, wrap it in uh, in hydrogen peroxide soaked paper towel, and that'll help uh, bleach out this uh, the uh, the antler and turn it white. I've also got a couple pieces that didn't survive all the, the boiling and then I eventually put the elk down on its nose. Um, these two pieces are, are part of its, uh, of its extension of its nose here. And I eventually what I'll do is once I've got everything cleaned up, I'll, I'll basically just glue those back on. So, so even if you do have a little bit of an accident like I did, uh, you can always fix it later. So I'll keep those there. So this is pretty easy. Uh, some, some guys suggest basically putting this in, into a box and then packing, putting the head into a box and then packing a whole bunch of uh, uh, little cotton balls in and around the skull uh, with with hydrogen peroxide. I just wrap it in, in uh, basically wrap it in uh, paper towel and it seems to work really well for me and then I um, come by and soak the paper towel with hydrogen peroxide um, over the next few days and it seems to do the job. Now you may want to get some paper towel right inside the eye sockets here because you'll be able to see inside the eye sockets when you're uh, when you have it mounted on the wall and it's nice if they're nice and white as well so we'll put a little paper towel in there and that'll draw some moisture into there all right so i've mummified my elk antlers here uh, i've wrapped it in uh, paper towel that's soaked in hydrogen peroxide this stuff's available at a, any of your shoppers, drug mart sort of uh, uh, pharmacies, I should say. And uh, this is the stuff they used to, like, you know, kids sometimes used to bleach their hair and stuff like that. Anyways, it's relatively cheap. Um, so I just, I'm going to spend the next uh, few days just uh, redosing this, uh, uh, basically dri like dribbling, keeping it nice and moist. And uh, after a few days, I'll peel this all off and I'll show you guys what it looks like and hopefully it'll be nice and bright and white. Great. Okay. Welcome.
back. It's a few days later. We're inside now because it's a little later in the day. Uh, but we've we wrapped up the elk skull with uh, paper towel saturated in hydrogen peroxide. Um, I then uh, just took plastic wrap and wrapped it around the skull to hold everything in place and keep the moisture in. Um, so that's the first time I've tried this, but I think it's a, a good idea. Uh, it was also really hot uh, this past last few days, so any moisture would have dried right out. So I tried this, it looks like the moisture is holding on there really well, so I'll go ahead and unwrap it and see how we did, see how things look. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's, it's, it's nice and white. Um, it'll actually get quite a bit whiter too as it dries out. Uh, it's still quite saturated here from both still that boiling process that we did plus adding the, uh, the hydrogen peroxide. So when it dries right out, it'll probably turn uh, pearl and nice and pearly white. So it looks really great. So the last thing I'm gonna do uh, just to get it ready to mount on the wall is um, I've got some stainless steel uh, light gauge wire uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and what I do is I just wrap it around the antler, at uh, the base of the antler here, and uh, just do a bunch of wraps. Oops. Well, um, so I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, it's not that much work at all to do it this way. So I hope. Uh, on your adventures this hunting season, you'll get an opportunity to uh, clean up uh, a set of antlers and for your wall, and um, hopefully it'll turn out something like this. And so thanks for spending time with Eat Wild, and keep track of us on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, we'll kind of keep you posted there, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.